Hi, my name is Alex. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use our mission control software, Houston, to control the satellite, in this case, Protosat, uh, and operate the payload for demonstration purposes. So we'll turn the laser on, we'll make it blink, and I'll give you just a really quick overview of how to use Houston. Nothing too fancy. There's lots of great documentation online um, about Houston and how to use Houston. The Orcasat Command and Data Handling YouTube channel has some great videos uh, that are a little bit more advanced on how to do things like run tests in Houston. So we won't be talking about that today. We also won't be talking about how to install Houston. I'm gonna give a quick overview of how to launch Houston, uh, how to connect to the satellite, and then just some basic commands and some things you need to know before you can do a demonstration of the satellite. Light. Here in front of us, we have OBS Studio, and this is pulling a live feed of Protosat uh, sitting in its protective box. There's another video that I, I put up recently about basically storage and handling and, and how to connect all the cables and configure the jumpers on Protosat. So we won't go over that in this video. Here you can see the live view of, of Orcasat, and this is very useful um, because you can see like LEDs on the EGSE, so you can get an idea of what's going on, as well as when we turn the laser on, you can see the actual laser, so you know things are working properly. It also has a temperature sensor so you can use this to validate temperature data that you're pulling off the satellite. This live view is very useful. When you're doing a demonstration, you don't actually need to bring the satellite anywhere with you. You can simply just remote into this computer and do the demonstration with the live feed showing the payload operation. It's much easier than having to transport the satellite anywhere. So first things first, we'll move the screen to the side so you can keep a tabs on that and what's going on. Uh, we're going to navigate into the documents folder, uh, GCS. This should be where you installed Houston on your computer. This is definitely where Houston's installed on Protosat computer. You can confirm that by just navigating to the Houston.py file. If it's in here, this is the right folder. Uh, and let's launch Houston. So it's a Python application, so you just need to launch it from the command line. Um, and you can do so by typing in... Well, actually, first we'll load up the virtual environment, uh, which can be done by the command dot slash venv scripts is the path and then the activate is the file that we're going to do and this activate file loads up the virtual environment you can see this by the ven file um, you can actually just run the houston.py file and it will just work um, but if you're doing any sort of development it's a good idea to run everything in a virtual environment and there's no guarantees that it, it will work natively to launch houston you just need to use the python uh, houston.py command and it helps if you spell it right and you can see it's loading up here. And I will point out that Houston is a very impressive piece of software. And Houston was almost entirely built by student volunteers uh, from the UBC Orbit and SFU SAT uh, engineering clubs. Couldn't have done Orcasat without you guys. You are very appreciated. Even if UVic gets all the credit, you guys know how important this piece of software is and, and you know the work that you put into it. And we appreciate that. So we've loaded up Houston. The first thing we wanna do is just ping the satellite with this green ping button here. If you can't get a ping from the satellite, just check that you're actually connected properly. Um, sometimes if the computer restarts, the EGSE, the electrical ground support equipment, that kind of interfaces between the satellite and the computer, uh, will change COM ports. In this case, it's on COM20, um, but if this is red and it's not connected, you need to go into settings, OBC EGSE serial port, and then just select a different COM port. In most cases, it'll just be the most bottom one or the largest number. If that doesn't work, just try a different COM port. You can try remotely rebooting the computer and seeing if that solves the problem. Um, you can also try closing Houston and restarting it, see if that solves the problem. Yeah, so we can ping it. Um, there's a couple fields in this ping to pay attention to that's useful for doing basic demonstrations. The first is the is app, and the second is state. Is app lets you know if the firmware has loaded or not. Uh, when you first reset the satellite it is in the bootloader it hasn't actually loaded the application yet and it sits in the bootloader for 60 seconds to allow you to hit it with some new software so the very first thing you have to do is make sure it's actually loaded into the application and you can do that by either just waiting 60 seconds and it'll automatically load the application or to speed things up you can use the firmware underscore load command and then we get this loading image with crc and then some long number and if you ping it again, you'll see the is app has now gone to one, which means that the firmware has loaded and you're good to go. Um, the second field to pay attention to is the state. Um, by default, there's three states the satellite runs in. There's safe, there's nominal, and there's payload mode. 
Safe mode is the default mode of operation. In safe mode, most subsystems are turned off and you can't schedule time tag commands. In nominal mode, you can schedule time tag commands and then they will actually run at the right time. And then in payload mode, that's when it's actually like operating the payload and whatnot. So if you're in safe mode, you can do most of what you need to do for the demonstration. You don't need to transition into nominal mode. If you did want to transition it into nominal mode to actually run time tag commands, you can use the command SM, which stands for state machine transition. And then the argument is nominal all capitals. If you ping it again, you now get state equals nominal one. Just as a disclaimer, you don't actually need to do this. You can do every command that I'm going to show you today. You can do in safe mode, but it is best practice just to transition it into nominal mode. Um, and I'll talk about why you might want to do that in a little bit. We've connected to Protosat. We've been able to ping it. We loaded the firmware and then we brought it out of safe mode into nominal mode. So now we're ready to go ahead and, and do some basic demonstrations. So I'm going to show you two demos here. I'm going to show you how to turn the laser on. And I'm going to show you how to make the laser blink. But before we can do either of those two things, we have to turn the actual payload module on. By default, most subsystems are electrically powered off and they're only powered on via control from the onboard computer. So we're going to do that right now. And you can use the command set payload power state to on. So the command is set payload power state, all underscores, and the argument is on in capital letters. So if we send this command, we get a response that says payload power on successful. That means the payload's on and we're ready to send payload specific commands. Payload specific commands all start with payload and then underscore something. In this case, we're gonna turn the laser on. Now there's two lasers. There's laser one and there's laser two. Laser one is near infrared. And you can turn it on with the underscore on. Payload laser one underscore on. You need to give it a hex value. For max brightness, just use FF, FF. Um, now you're probably wondering near infrared, um, you won't be able to see that. Well, you actually can. If you look on the left hand side, you'll see that there's a bit of a weird purple glow coming out of the satellite. Somehow the camera doesn't fully filter out uh, near infrared and so it's actually able to pick this up and it registers as purple. Yeah, just thought I'd show you that. <laughs> to turn it off, it's payload laser one off. Simple as that. And do make sure you turn it off when you're done. Um, you can leave the lasers on for a good amount of time, like 30 seconds to a minute, and they don't get too hot. But if you leave it on indefinitely, like on the order of like minutes, um, you can definitely damage some things. So that's laser one. Uh, laser two is the red laser, which you can see a lot better. So we're going to use the payload laser two on command. And then once again, argument of FF, FF. And now you can see, whoa, that's a big bright red light coming out of that thing. Pretty cool. Once again, we'll just turn it off. Well, since we're done with it. One thing I will note is if you're trying to pick, take a picture of the satellite directly with a camera, um, the clear plastic cover of the box and the lens of the webcam make it so that you can actually see the red light and it actually registers as a red light. If you just turn the laser on um, and you're looking directly at the satellite, uh, with your eyes it appears as like pure red. But to a camera, the red light is so much brighter than the satellite body that it just completely overexposes the camera and it just kind of looks like a bright white light. It doesn't really look red at all. What you can do, you can actually turn the laser brightness down. And so a good value that I found that's a little bit easier to take photos of is 10 zero zero. And this brings the laser brightness down enough that it's not so much brighter than the satellite body and you can actually get a decent photo of it and it actually looks red in the photo. Okay, so that's just turning the laser on. If you wanna make it blink like it would, when it's actually in space doing payload calibrations, you can simply use the payload underscore iLoom command. And this grabs kind of the default operating mode of the payload and it runs it. So we'll do that now. And as you can see, it's blinking. And if you could look really closely, you'll see it's blinking red and purple, which is the near infrared, which is pretty cool. You can actually see that. And basically what it's doing is it's switching back and forth between blinking red and blinking near infrared, as well as blinking both at the same time and having a blackout period with no lights drawn at all. The blackout period is very important because we don't know how reflective the satellite body is going to be once it gets to space. The nadir face, which is the face that you can see here, is coated with an anti-reflectance coating, so it shouldn't reflect too much light. But as you can also see, 
there's a bunch of stainless steel screws holding this panel down and those will reflect light. So the satellite body is going to reflect some light as well as if it's not perfectly knitter pointing, you will get some light reflected off the solar panels on the sides. Orcasat is going to appear as some level of brightness to the telescope and we don't know what that level of brightness is until we can measure it when the lights are off. And so that's why we turn the lights off kind of during the payload calibration. We do it as a blink. So when the telescope takes a picture of Orcasat, you get parts of the picture where the lasers are on and parts of the picture where the lasers are off. And you can use that to calibrate for the actual brightness of the lasers. So that's the payload island command. And that's basically it. Very simple commands. It's a quick, easy demo to show people what it looks like. There's also this payload tab over here. This payload tab will only work if you are running in nominal mode. But if you do wanna do a proper payload pass and get all of the data off the payload relatively easily, you can use this payload tab. For pass ID, just use a random number that you'll remember. Illumination start UTC time. This is just the time that the OBC thinks is UTC. So if you go back to the monitor tab and you hit ACK, you can grab this exact timestamp here. And it's a little bit cut off, you can't really see it, but yeah, this is 2516. We haven't updated the time on this on this particular OBC. You just want to grab this exact date time format and copy and paste it into here and then just iterate it by like a minute or two. For illumination duration, keep this under 30 seconds for it not to throw any errors. You can run it for longer than 30 seconds, but you have to reduce the TIA sampling rate in order to get it to run longer. Otherwise it just overflows the memory. And then everything else you can basically keep the same. Um, and then for 840 laser power, you can just go FF, 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 and FF, FF, like this. And then this will just give you the same profile as the payload iLoom command that I just demonstrated. You can go into here and change the actual profile. I don't recommend touching that if you don't have to. Once you're done, all you have to do is hit the configure payload parameters button, and then that'll manually send each command to configure the payload. And then once that's done, you can hit schedule payload pass. And then all you have to do is just wait. And in one to two minutes, whenever you scheduled it, it'll turn on and, and run the payload. Once the payload has ran, you can hit the download payload pass file, and that'll downlink all of the telemetry off of the satellite. And it's a big old telemetry file, everything that you would need to do a payload operation when in orbit. And all that stuff can be found just in the GCS folder. And I believe it all just downlinks into OBC files and it'll show up as like the date here. And then it should show up as like your pass ID with the files in it. Sorry for not giving you a, a good example of that. I don't really expect too many people to be using that uh, feature because downlinking data is not really an interesting part of a demonstration, but I thought I'd just cover it really quick if you were trying to use the payload tab to do some more advanced things and actually pull data off of it. Generally speaking, all you need to do to kind of impress some people is just show them Houston. It's pretty cool and turn the payload on and make it blink. And I think that's going to be good enough for most people's demos. So before we leave, um, it's best practice just hit the reset button, just in case you left one of the lasers on by resetting the onboard computer, the laser will turn off. And that's it. That's the quick demo on how to use Houston and how to do some basic payload operations to turn the laser on and make the laser blink. Thanks for watching.